Hello and welcome viewers of ABG News. I hope you are all having a wonderful Wednesday wherever you are. Uh, this time uh, I want to comment uh, on the viral video that most of you have seen of the uh, Limpopo MEC for Health, uh, Dr. Uh, Ramatuba, uh, who said some things to a Zimbabwean uh, national who had gone to one of the hospitals in the province to seek treatment. Uh, I realize that there has been some uh, mixed views on the contents uh, of the MEC's comments. There are people who are saying that the comments are warranted. There are people who are saying that the comments are xenophobic. And then there are others who are saying that uh, it cuts both ways. Uh, and I'm, I believe that uh, while the MEC has it in her rights to raise some of these issues, has it in her rights uh, to voice concern over the overstretching of her budget, uh, there is a way of trying to communicate this kind of message because we are talking here about somebody who occupies a political office but also somebody uh, who is in charge of a province, who is given a budget, as she said, to look after people in her province, and it overstretches the budget. If uh, people who are then not documented uh, cross over, as she said, people seem to have a calendar of when uh, specialists will be visiting Limpopo and where these specialists will be going in terms of hospitals and then they ambush these specialists and most of these people as she said are undocumented uh, it is something that we've always said that it is not good for people to be in a country undocumented uh, other than overstretching the budget they also place uh, the security uh, of that country and the safety uh, of the residents of that country and their own safety and security uh, at risk. Uh, but also, uh, was it the right moment? Was it the right audience? Was it the right time for the MEC to then lash out at somebody who is uh, on a bed desperately seeking attention? Because these people who cross over illegally are not doing so because they like it. They are doing so because of the collapse uh, of the health sector in Zimbabwe, because of the collapse of the economy in Zimbabwe. Fair and fine. Uh, it's not South Africa's duty to be picking up where the Zimbabwean government uh, has destroyed, to be picking up the pieces uh, of a shattered nation that Zimbabwe has become. But also we believe that uh, there is a way of communication. The communication lines between Zimbabwe and South Africa uh, are not broken in as far as we are concerned. There is a binational commission that set here uh, earlier this month. And these issues were supposed to be raised there. And we hope and, and believe that these were raised. There are continuous uh, engagements between the two countries. Zimbabwe has got an, an embassy and a consulate which are here in South Africa. South Africa has got a consulate and an embassy which are in Zimbabwe. Instead of lashing out at desperate Zimbabweans who have got no control over what is happening in their country, I believe that uh, the South African government has got a way and they've got a clearly defined a way of communicating their dismay at what is happening in Zimbabwe because to lash out at somebody who is on the receiving end uh, of this kind of uh, a crisis would uh, be insensitive and insincere. I would not say she was xenophobic, but I would say she was insensitive to this patient who went there because this was their last hope yes it was no it is not warranted for people to cross over illegally uh, especially because the permit uh, system in zimbabwe has kind of improved it is very easy to apply for a permit in zimbabwe it's even costlier to cross illegally into south africa than to apply for a permit and travel legally so in a way the mec had uh, generous i mean genuine concerns uh, and the fact that this patient was uh, treated it also shows that despite this dismay despite this uh, outrage despite this uh, situation that the mec finds herself in she also had this humane uh, part uh, 
which allowed her to have the patient operated upon. But these are issues that have to be addressed, and these are issues that have to be addressed between the two countries, not with the poor because we also know that uh, Zimbabweans, it's not that they've been sitting on their laurels and not doing anything to try and correct the situation, especially politically. We know that uh, the ANC, on the other hand, has been uh, sharing the same bed with ZANU-PF when it comes to addressing the issues of Zimbabwe. We know we've got the history of quiet diplomacy by the ANC. We've got a history uh, of the ANC sending their own uh, IT experts to Zimbabwe to assist in their own words, to assist ZANU-PF to win elections in Zimbabwe. And we know that the leadership problem in Zimbabwe cannot be divorced from ZANU-PF uh, as a governing party. So the ANC is also on record saying that ZANU-PF is their political partner in Zimbabwe. So if this partnership is really working, we expect the ANC to sit down with ZANU-PF. We expect South Africa to sit down with the Zimbabwean government to raise these issues, not to lash out at people who are seeking uh, assistance from South Africa because of the damage that has been caused uh, to Zimbabwe by ZANU-PF. We remember that in 2019, uh, Zimbabweans took to the streets, they demonstrated against the rising cost of living under the government of ZANU-PF, and some of them were presently shot by soldiers. Others were, were killed uh, in that shooting. There are men who were arrested, there are others who were tortured, they ran all over the world uh, seeking political asylum. And South Africa sent a convoy, uh, in fact they sent an envoy uh, to Zimbabwe which met ZANU-PF and we know on record that Kwete Mantashe, the chairperson of the, South, of the African National Congress, went publicly and said that the people who were demonstrating uh, were, were, were on the payroll of the West. They had been paid to cause uh, commotion in Zimbabwe. So when people do that and then you turn around and say these people are overburdening your own system, there is some level of, of insincerity. Uh, on the part of the ANC. And we also know on record that there are some ANC bigwigs who are running businesses in Zimbabwe. And this shows that while the ANC and ZANU-PF are united at the top in an elitist arrangement, they don't care a hood about the people of Zimbabwe. That is why instead of facing ZANU-PF uh, head on, they would rather coerce and coalesce with ZANU-PF. They would rather uh, wrap a stamp what ZANU-PF is doing while lashing out at Zimbabweans and pointing out Zimbabweans and other migrants as the main reason why South Africa has got this high unemployment rate, has got this high crime rate, and has got this immigration problem when they know exactly where the problem lies. So we expect the ANC to be sincere in this. They must uh, confront the problem where it lies, not to lash out at people who are already suffering the very effects of what they are supporting publicly. So we expect uh, the ANC, if they are sincere about uh, lashing out at people who destroy the economy and then come to South Africa, they know that ZANU-PF bigwigs are coming here for treatment, MTC bigwigs triple C bigwigs are coming here for, to seek treatment and there is no divorcing the Zimbabwean economic downturn from both ZANU-PF and, and triple C or ZANU-PF and the MDC because these are the people we are charged with correcting the situation back home and these are the people that we expect the ANC to be talking to, that we expect the South African government to be talking to because away from the politics it is up to the Zimbabwean leaders to sit down and say what is it that we are getting wrong, what is it that we need to do if we are to make this country better, if we are to make the lives of these people better. So this is what we expect. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it.